Oh, you're such a good flesh hound. Oh, I love you so much. You're such a good girl. Oh, you're such a good girl. Did you, did you kill a lot of souls today? Did, was Corn happy? Is that what you did? Oh, look at you. Oh, look at the bandana. Oh, this is so good. I love you so much. I'm Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to another bunker update. This is update number five, I'm guessing. Yeah, update number five. So what we like to do from here on out is do more frequent updates because the reason why we didn't is because a hunter, he was visiting approximately once a month, sometimes a little bit longer, and I wanted to show him first before everyone else. But because of the production that we're doing now, we're accomplishing a lot in short periods of time, I think it's more prudent that we give you guys more frequent updates. Do we agree with this? I think it's something we agree with, yes. Okay, so we're gonna continue with the tour here. Okay, you gotta stay right here though, otherwise you're gonna go over and gonna eat all the little pieces of wood everywhere and that's no good, you gotta be killing souls. So, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you this. This is the formerly known as Necromunda Studio Blueprint Plans, now known as the Underhive, so check this out. This is the layout. This shows the number of panels. The reason why we're building panels is because the actual framing of the walls is not constructed yet downstairs where the studios will end up. So we are saving time by building four by eight foot panels and we're going to be attaching them afterwards. So this is what we got going on here with the gaming table in the middle, the side tables on the sides. We have the door wall, the back wall, the first wall that you see when you walk in. So the orientation has been set up. We even have the colors, and this helps Vito, who's holding the camera right now. This helps him kind of color match and uh, see what's complementary to one another. Here we go. So this is an example of um, one of the walls. This is the door wall. You see uh, 13, 12, 14, I know it's kind of a weird setup, but actually 12, 13, 14, there you go, it was backwards, it was upside down. This is 12, 13, 14. This is all drawn out on graph paper. Each square represents three inches, which translates to real life. That helps when we are constructing these. What I've done is I've numbered everything and I've corresponded it with the materials needed and the sizes of the wood and or MDF needed. I've also notated places where we need laser cut and 3D printed items. You're going to see all of these physicalized in a few moments. You're going to see the work of myself, the work of Drewski, and the work of Vito, who's holding the camera, all in a few moments, and Mike as well. Uh, Mike's part of the team. He's part of the bunker crew who's helping us construct this. Mike is not here today, so hi, Mike. We miss you. We love you. Please continue to um, help us and be here and be yourself, who's awesome. I'm going to show you the next panel. Got distracted. These are just a couple side panels because we've got a couple walls in the studios which are 14 and a half feet, so we need a partial panel to finish off the length of the wall. This here, this wall was designed by a good friend of mine, Doug, from Table War. So um, that is a surprise for, uh, well, not a surprise anymore. I kind of just gave it away. But uh, for people who visit the studio who know Table War, who is a fan of the fat mats, if you know who that is, if you have a fat mat, then uh, you'll appreciate the designer of this studio. He actually came up here. Uh, and he helped out for a number of days and helped me design this. So not only is the panels, not only are the panels going to go there, but there's going to be a massive image that goes behind all of these panels, and it's going to be of a backdrop of industrial, war-torn battlescape, very Necromunda-ish, and buildings and a whole bunch of just like hive city world awesomeness. Right here we have the center panel, which I've moved over there, this is also something that Doug has designed, and so we've actually designed this in real life. You'll see this, this is just shy of four feet by four feet, with the chains and all these bolts, which are 3D printed by Drewski, and then paint job by Vito at the top. And then we have more generic panels. We have this, which I grabbed as inspiration from a terrain piece that I saw. It was longer to start, and I kind of just shrunk it. I made it to scale so that we can fit it in real life. And these are blank for the purposes of adding embellishments to them, such as weapons and or kill coins and or whatever we want to go on the walls. So now that you've seen the blueprints, let's take a look at the real life. And Ruby, you eat really loudly. Ruby. This is a good girl. This is a good girl. All right, let's continue the tour here. 
workshop is kind of empty today because we're making the video. And number two, Drewski now works back here because, oh, hold on, let me, let me show you this first, just really quickly before I show you that because that, that's like the, the eye candy cool factor. This here, this is our work schedule. It shows each panel and it shows the construction and paint and we check it off when it's done. So this is the new set. This is for the next studio that we're working on. Vito has written all the panels that are needed. You might notice that there are duplicate numbers. It's because there are duplicate panel numbers, multiple panels being constructed with the same number on them. And once they're done, they're checked and it's a visual checklist for us and we also have a, a due date for it just to keep us on track, keep us working. Because otherwise, we get very distracted around here because all the, the funness and the coolness and the awesomeness that's happening. Because we drink a bottle of awesome sauce every morning and then we exercise downstairs where the gym is because we've transported it. So let's continue. Let's go this, this way. We've constructed the skateboard so that we can transport tables and panels back and forth because sometimes they get really, really heavy. This is uh, Vito's Love Shack. This is the room in which he paints various items, mostly does priming because it has that massive fan. And that is uh, why it's mostly done in here. Door shut and all this mist and spray and airbrushing goes up there because it's a massive air gun. It's not just an airbrush. It's, a, it's an air gun. It's a paint gun. Okay. You ready for it? We can't go this way. Oh. But there is something we can show off. You know what? No. Not yet. Later. No. Gotta give you guys a reason to come back in a couple weeks, right? I love this part. This is this is this is one of my favorites. So Juicy's in there. We're gonna end the tour on him, so we'll come back to him in a minute. But this, these, these are the panels that we have constructed, that the team has constructed. So here it is. Just for fun. Let me show you the before and after side by side because it's really cool. So that right there, that's the before and that's the after. That's what it turned out to be. Vito had a really good idea of painting this purple and Drewski and Mike also had the same thought in their minds. And um, that's the color I had all along and I just want to see if they got to the color on their own. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't try to suggest a white that looked like it was going to be good. Mm -hmm. That was a test to see if they were going to, uh, you know, uh, agree. And they didn't. They stood their ground, and that's exactly what uh, they needed to do. In order, I'm just kidding. I, 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 I didn't know what I wanted at first. That's the truth. And Vito is the color guy, which is why I trusted him to choose the best color. And I say I trusted him is because at first I didn't. I was like, no, purple's going to look dumb. But I really like the purple now, so he convinced me. And he also chose this complimentary color to go on top as well. And behind there, behind there, all the open spaces, that's going to be the massive canvas backdrop of the industrial landscape and behind it. So if you can picture that. These are the finished Mecromunda tables. They are not plugged in currently, but there are two lights underneath and they actually light up. So that's pretty cool. Now here, here's the before. Okay, you can see the before. And then there's the app. Now you only see two panels there, not three, is because this is the door wall section. So there's actually another area that will go in the middle where the door will be, which is why we have some of these random strips already crafted and created, because once the studio is constructed downstairs, then we just simply need to attach the pieces to the wall. And then we'll be painting up the door to make it fit everything. We'll actually probably take the door off and then do the same effect that uh, Vito, he'll do the same effect that he did on all the rest here, which is doing the rusting to make it match everything. That's this wall. These pipes, uh, they are one of my favorite panels because they just fit the Necromunda theme so well. I, I, I just love the way they look. Vito's done a fantastic job on them. And you might notice that some of these are larger than 
the smaller ones. And that's because Drewski has 3D printed these massive bolts. Because they're big. They're, they're really big. Um, I don't know where you would get, you've, there's probably a place where you can buy those, but they're at legitimate bolts. And they, 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 we just need the heads of them for the aesthetics. And that's what we've done. So check this out. This is where, that's that panel right there. You can see that one. And there it is in real life. Take a look at the sign. This is the sign that'll go above the door. When you walk inside the studio, you'll see this from the inside, not from the outside of the studio. So from the inside of the studio, when you look behind you, above the door will be this sign, the name of the studio, the underhive. All those little rivet heads or bolts, they're also 3D printed by Drewski. The design itself is designed by Drewski, and it was laser cut by Six Square Studio. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, what's Kevin's business partner name? Brad? Yeah. I and Brad. Thank you. I knew it. I was just testing him to see if uh, he would uh, say the right name. Totally locked out there. I rolled two dice and I got boxcars. So, here. Uh, this is the continuing on on the different panels. These are the different walls. And mind you, there's going to be various items such as these kill coins that will go in blank areas as well as weaponry that will go in blank areas of the panels. So this here, this has been 3D printed. This is a kill coin. I grabbed this from the Underhive book. Drewski uh, designed it. He 3D-ized it and he 3D printed it. So this is his work. And then we got another one here too because uh, for those of us who are part of this gang, uh, I think we know. I think we know what this means. Warren Matthew Glanfield. In case you guys didn't know that, those are actually his initials. He did not intend that from the beginning. It just happened to work out that way. If you're ever wondering what are on the other side, DWN. See what I did there. All right, so this is the, this is the, this part, okay? And that's that, physicalized in real life. Now there's gonna be some more attachments that go on here. There's a, a D hook or a D piece that goes there and then that attaches to a chain that goes up. There's also two brackets or hinges that go on here, which have been painted up as well. They're just being stored separately right now. This will go on the back wall, so this sewer Entrance, sewer cap, will go on the back wall. It'll be the first thing that you see when you walk into the underhive and probably add some ooze effect coming from the bottom and dripping down. I think that'd be kind of very appropriate and very relevant to go inside of this. So this whole wall that you see, these are the panels of the wall, the same color. This color happens to be my favorite color. Is it your favorite color too, out of the colors of the Necromunda Studio? Or the Underhive? Yep. That, that's the official name. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I love the way the rust looks. I love everything about it. Uh, I'll say this, Vito. I'll say that uh, you keep on getting better and better, which is fantastic because then it just adds to the project. Why, thank you, Dave. You're, you're very welcome. Um, and we will keep this for future reference. We will. And I'll take the camera in the other room and hold the camera by myself and tell the viewers what I really think. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it looks fantastic. I, I love it. Now, we shall enter the Shrine of Chaos. Is uh, the Shrine of Drewski? This, this is, is my office. It's, uh, he, it's, I'm loaning it to him. It's, it's my office, but... Uh, you don't have to fight me for it. It still has them. Okay, I'll fight you for it. But I get to. Thank you, Russell. You gotta, you gotta 3D print me a mech, and then I'll fight you for it. Why would I Did give you, you a Pinky Russell? Yeah, Pinky Russell. No way. Oh, okay, but big toe versus Pinky, and then I have half a chance. Oh. This is getting weird, guys. Okay, all right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the 3D printing that Drewski is doing. Okay. His job has evolved into 
designer of these. I'm the master technician. Awesome things. Because now he's back here. He used to be back there with us doing construction. Now these guys talk too much. It's me doing construction. Vito doing painting. You doing designing. Yeah. Of the embellishments on the panels. Uh, are you telling? I am actually playing a musical instrument. Oh, okay. Can you hear the music? Uh, no. I hear the music. This is very yeah. noisy in here. Um, I get used to it. Yeah. I get used to it. It's actually very hot in here. It's not horrible right now. Why is so, it so hot in here? It's hot in here so that the plastic, when it melts onto the bed, it adheres to the bed and then it builds layers and it doesn't peel off and then we have chaos. Uh, I like it already. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's why it's hot in here. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Okay, okay. so <laughs> let's talk about this. Okay. Let's, let's talk about this scarab. Now, actually, Vito, why don't you talk about this? You should explain what this is for. Okay, uh, so the whole purpose of the Scarab is because our next studio, we are doing a Vatarac themed studio. And for those of you who are uh, fans of the channel, fans of the narrative campaigns, you guys know that Vatarac is a predominant Forge world. Um, and there's also a Necron tomb world that's underneath that Forge world. So we are going to have these little guys scattered all throughout the entire studio and it's almost like they're digitizing and eating the studio away and bringing it back down into the tomb world. Very cool. That's the first of many. Yeah, that was a test print. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna see if we like the size, adjust whatever needs adjusting, and uh, rinse and repeat. Very cool. Now how long did it take to print that? I... Nine hours and six minutes. Okay. And how many 3D printers have you got? We've got three in here. I've got four at home and two more on the way. I have a problem. We're helping him with this problem, just uh, so you know. And it's a really warm. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're here for you, We're helping here. him with this problem. And you guys uh, hosting an intervention? Actually, I'm doing a Reiki. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but I thought you wanted more printers so we get more stuff done. This is true. So I'm part of the problem. I'm not actually helping him. Uh, You're helping me create more of a problem. I am. Yeah. It's a big problem, but it's an awesome one. It is an awesome problem. So I think everyone wins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, check this out. So this is one of the printers I have at home. So I'm able to control all of this wirelessly, uh, remotely through the vast interwebs. Um, over here, we have a failed print because overnight we ran out of filament. So what I'm gonna do here is with my trusty calipers, measure how much has been printed. I'm gonna leave that right on the bed. This is vibrating. Um, and then I'll be able to kind of hack the file apart and then just kind of add on to that. What are you doing, Vito? You're making it weird. <laughs> like very weird. All right. Anyway. So what do we got here? These are the school end caps that are going on one of the panels for the, um, what, what's this? Batter studio X name? Studio. Batter X Studio. So yeah, that studio name's changed um, several times. So these just finished overnight also, so I want to leave them here so you guys can see it before I start another print. So it used to be the Mechanicum Studio. Yeah. Or the Imperium yeah. Studio. Yeah. Now it's the Batter X, and now it's very specific. Yeah, because we come up with a general name for it, general theme, and then we go specific because it's cool to make the narrative. And that's Vito's fault. Vito's yep. the narrative guy. Because we are helping build the mini wargaming cinematic universe for real. That well, sounds like an actual lot of actual excuses, but it makes sense, so... It does. It was it does all in the sense. delivery. Um, well, let's show this up. Um, this is the combination of Juski's and Vito's beautiful work here. Uh, Juski printed this, and Vito painted it. In my mind, I got your names mixed up. That's because you guys are combining your Disclaimer. skills. He does that often. This sounds I, like the language of excuses. It um, sounds like I didn't make any mistakes, and therefore this time. should be rewarded with chicken wings. I'm just throwing it out there. 15 Please. pounds? It is Friday. So what happens when I... Boop. Apparently, Vito goes... Beep, 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 beep. Apparently, <laughs> 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 like two beef. or three of them out of the. Yeah, like, that was like a solid, like seven out of fifteen. And a half. There you go. Yes. So what is this thing? Wiggle, wiggle. Okay. Does it control like the? Is that a camera? 
sometimes. The sweeps. And it, it can be what you want it to be. Okay. All right. The only thing it's missing is raspberry jam. So this is going to go in the underhive, and when you walk in, it'll be like. Boop, boop. So for those of you who have visited the current Mini Wargaming Studios, you have noticed that in my studio there is a calculator right by the door. Now the cool thing about this is that we've upgraded from a calculator to a. But these aren't actual buttons. They... They make beep boops. Well, yeah, but we have to be there for the sound effects. Right, which makes it better. Or the guests make their own noises right. and it's full immersion. That's it's true. Full. It's all about that guest experience. There you much. go. Yeah. And you know what? On that note, it is so hot in here. I got so it. if I'm the guest and I want the full immersion, I want Vito to beep and boop for me while I'm there, does that mean you're going to come with me? If you want. I'll beep and a boop, and you can... what? <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious how long you guys have been recording, and how much of it is just, like, nothing. Uh, uh, it, it's all everything it's and nothing. Everything, everything it's everything it's and nothing, and nothing and everything at the same time. Nothing ever? And how much truck can you bench press uh, with this? With, with this? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah! Oh. Um, Alright, so stay tuned for another two weeks for the next update. Thank you very much. Happy Wargaming, and we're not going to edit this because we're just going to upload it as one clip. I'm going to try. Oh, okay, no, don't die, Vito, please! I see you.